proudly Arab, Bahrain has a population of more than 200,000, of which 85% are Bahraini. People from more than 30 different countries make up the remaining 15%. This stable mixture of races, plus the use of English as the island's second language, makes Bahrain an unusually outward-looking state, a state with its eye constantly on international trade and understanding. Bahrain's internationalism is most obvious at the airport. It's the headquarters of Gulf Aviation, an airline that has been operating out of Bahrain for more than 20 years. Its aircraft range from this sophisticated BAC-111, providing fast modern air travel in the Gulf area, to light aircraft available on hire or charter and used mainly by the oil industry. They also operate F-27, specially modified for freight as well as passenger work. In addition, the Gulf Aviation provides airport services for the growing number of international airlines that have made Bahrain the centre of their east-west route. Each week, more than 60 international flights call here. 14 fly west to London and the rest of Europe. Seven go to the Far East and Australia. There are daily flights to India, Pakistan and most Middle East countries. The airport is keeping pace with the accelerating development of aviation. The runway is being extended, ready for the arrival of the first Boeing 747 jumbo jets in 1971, at a cost of over two million pounds. Bahrain, with its new network of taxiways and aircraft parks, will be the first airport in the Gulf fully geared for the jumbo jet age. New airport buildings costing an additional four million pounds are already under construction. In them, two 747s, with a total of 700 passengers, will be handled simultaneously. They will be serviced and ready for takeoff within 40 minutes of landing. Developments in the growing air freight field have not been forgotten. The new buildings will be equipped to unload containerized goods quickly for transshipment to other places in the Gulf by smaller aircraft. Bahrain is a natural entrepot for the rest of the Gulf. And this new deep water harbour at Mina Sulman, which is being enlarged to take eight ships at a time, is handling an ever increasing portion of the area's trade. Mina Sulman is claimed, with justification, to be the most efficient port in the Gulf. There's no congestion, and delays are few and far between. Since it was opened in 1961, no surcharge has been imposed by shipping companies for cargoes landed a tangible vote of confidence. Bahrain's hotel industry is being actively encouraged by the island's new tourist board. Hotels of international standard are being built to satisfy the growing demands from businessmen and tourists and the increasing use of Bahrain as a centre for Middle East trade conferences. Plans for a major extension that will double the number of rooms available were being drawn up less than 12 months after the opening of the new Gulf Hotel. The hotel, which has 130 rooms, is owned half by Gulf Aviation and half by 700 local shareholders. Soon, these fishing boats will have moved to another anchorage. In their place, on land reclaimed from the sea, will rise the Bahrain Hilton. There will be room for 500 people, and Bahrainis will be training for responsible jobs long before the hotel is completed. Government House also stands on reclaimed land. People living nearby dubbed it the White House, as it rose gleaming from the sea. Built by Bahrainis, the Government House in many ways typifies the country's determination to be in the forefront of development and yet retain its own distinctive stamp. Government House is the center of the island's administration, and it's the meeting place of the State Council under the presidency of Sheikh Khalifa bin Sulman Al Khalifa. The council is made up of all the heads of government departments, and it includes Bahrain's heir apparent, Sheikh Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Always high on the agenda at council meetings are ways of encouraging still more industrial development. Development which began in 1932, when a drilling rig owned by the Bahrain Petroleum Company, BAPCO, struck oil in the island's central desert. It was the first oil find in the southern half of the Gulf. 
1934, the first shipment of crude oil established the basis of a new and flourishing economy. A year later, work started on a 10,000 barrel a day refinery. Today, it's one of the largest refineries in the Middle East, with an output well over 205,000 barrels. It refines Bahrain's daily output of 75,000 barrels of crude oil, plus another 130,000 from Saudi Arabia. In the early days of the oil industry, experts came from other countries because they had skills the Bahrainis did not possess. Today, the expatriate technician is vanishing fast. 90% of BAPCO's 5,000 employees are now Bahrainis. Given the chance to learn new techniques, they respond enthusiastically. And now they have become expatriate experts in other Middle Eastern countries. But the future depends on the island's children, and the government allocates more than a quarter of its budget to education. Bahrain has more than 100 schools and over 2,000 teachers. Almost a quarter of the country's 200,000 people are currently attending one of the free government schools. The average number of children in a class is less than 25. As well as skilled craftsmen, Bahrain's education system has produced engineers, lawyers, chemists, and doctors to help staff the island's hospitals. The free health service takes 22% of the national budget. It provides 90 doctors and clinics to serve outlying areas. But the island is a healthy place and its advanced state of development made it the obvious choice as the site of the new Gulf Technical College. It's a regional college set up with the aim of producing young people qualified to play a major role in industry and commerce. There's room for 250 boys and 50 girls, with 50 places for boarders from other parts of the Gulf. All professional and technical subjects are taught in English. Satellite communications came to Bahrain as naturally as ships and aircraft. This four million pound satellite station, opened by Cable and Wireless in 1969, provides instant high quality communication with the rest of the world by telephone, telex and telegram. Almost in the center of the oil field, within a few hundred yards of Bahrain's first historic oil find, stands another link in the country's communication chain. These giant dishes send and receive high-quality radio telephone messages over short ranges, linking Bahrain with other Gulf states. Soon, another £2 million investment program will link businessmen with the international subscriber dialing system. The operation of this complex communication system has meant using some of the most advanced electronic techniques in the world. But cable and wireless have found they can rely on the natural aptitude and dexterity of the Bahraini. The company employs several hundred local people, and it has four training schools on the island. Bahrain's new 40 million pound aluminium smelter, being built on the east coast, will be the first major heavy industry in the Gulf area, apart from oil. It's owned by an international consortium, Aluminium Bahrain, and the Bahrain government has a 27% holding. It will be one of the first industries to take advantage of Bahrain's huge field of natural gas. To feed the generators making the vast quantities of electricity needed for the smelting process, BAPCO will provide each day more than double the present daily output of gas obtained from the North Sea. The smelter's initial capacity will be 90,000 tonnes, and most of the output will be for export. But the Bahrain government is encouraging the development of secondary industries based on the smelter. Already, there are plans for the production of aluminium powder in a factory sponsored by the government in conjunction with British and German companies. When the smelter is finished, it will have a staff of almost a thousand, but two and a half thousand men are needed during the construction stage. Local contractors are responsible for the bulk of the work, which is on schedule, and most of the supervision is carried out by Bahraini engineers working alongside specialists from all over the world. But some of the work for the smelter is being carried out at the DeLong Wimpy fabrication yard, 10 miles away. About 300 Bahrainis work here under the supervision of local foremen. And since 1964, they've been demonstrating their engineering skills by building offshore drilling platforms 
and other major pieces of equipment to the oil industry. With the arrival of the super tanker, the yard has been moving into new fields. A recent $9 million contract was for a huge sea island for loading super tankers off the coast of Saudi Arabia. Bahrain's growing importance as a trading center in the Gulf has resulted in a parallel growth in its ship repair yard. The Bahrain Ship Repairing and Engineering Company, a totally local concern with 700 Bahraini shareholders, has the most extensive facilities to be found anywhere between Rotterdam and Hong Kong. There are two slipways, each capable of slipping ships of up to 1,000 tons and more than 200 feet in length. Wooden dows built in Bahrain have enjoyed a reputation for excellence over thousands of years. Now the materials have changed, but the reputation remains. The sons of the dow builders tackle any aspect of ship repairing on vessels small enough to fit the slipways or on huge tankers at sea. Another locally owned project is the plastics factory in the free zone at Mina Sulman. The factory makes nearly a hundred different products, from jugs to water pipes, and soft drinks cases to jerry cans. In a highly competitive field, it sells successfully to Bahrain's domestic market and has a thriving export business. Fishing is another fast-growing industry in Bahrain. Prawns are the main catch. They are processed and frozen in a factory in the free zone and then sent to the United States, Japan and Europe. The fleet was formed in 1967 with eight boats and now has nearly doubled in size. The only time they can be seen in port in any numbers is during the refitting and overhaul period. 60% of the shares in the fishing company, which employs over 500 men in season, are held by Bahraini investors and the remainder by Ross Fisheries of Grimsby. Under the wise leadership of His Highness Sheikh Issa bin Sulman Al Khalifa, who became ruler on the death of his father in 1961, Bahrain has prospered. It is a long way from being the richest country in the Gulf, but thanks to the careful use of its revenues, Bahrainis enjoy the benefits of the 20th century. The modern roads are a delight to the motorist and the investor. Bahrain already has more than 12,000 cars. But in contrast to more advanced countries, the road planners are one jump ahead. But Sheikh Issa's foremost achievement is Issa Town. It's the first totally new community to be built in the Arab world. And ultimately, it will provide homes for more than 35,000 people. The houses are designed for low, average and high income groups. Only the cost of the house is borne by the purchaser, with payments spread over 20 years at subsidized interest rates. The cost of roads and services is entirely borne by the government, which has built schools, clinics, and a spectacular traffic-free shopping precinct, which includes a restaurant and coffee bar block. Easter Town is the home of Bahrain's National Sports Stadium. It's built to international standards with full flood lighting and accommodates 11,000 spectators, 6,000 seated in the comfort of this modern grandstand. Manama, Bahrain's capital, has all the advantages of a modern city, but with a population of only 80,000, there is still time to live and room to expand. In a traditional setting, there are modern restaurants, shops, and all amenities. Bahrain's modern power station, using gas turbine generators, provides the island with cheap electricity. Oil and, of course, natural gas are there in abundance as a basis for heavy industry. Other utilities are first class. The big international banks have come to Bahrain, and seven have set up offices in Manama. To the foreign investor, the island offers the advantages of low land rental and low building costs. There's plenty of trained labor, plenty of local capital, and perhaps most attractive of all, no income or profits tax. Repatriation of profits by foreign-owned companies is not restricted, and there are special concessions for the import of capital equipment. Air-conditioned houses and flats, furnished or unfurnished, are available on short or long-term leases in attractive residential areas. For nine months of the year, the climate